Welcome back, everybody. Uh, last week, we spoke to Jeff and his cancer diagnosis. Today's back. We've got some questions to ask him regarding that. Under the coconut tree, his cancer story. Jeff, how you doing? I'm excellent, Reebok. What about you? Yeah, good. Okay. Well, let's go back to the beginning, Jeff. Um, what advice would you give to someone having trouble accepting their diagnosis from a doctor regarding cancer? I can say this, Reebok. I was in total absolute shock uh I, I it, it was like a an atom bomb hit me it, it was the worst thing words i'd ever heard but yet i can i can say this would be a normal reaction for for 99.999 percent of people that receive this information so it's completely normal the thing is how are you going to get past this deep traumatizing shock that's the question from my own experience i surrounded myself with support the hospital was very very support supportive everybody in the hospital wants to support you they want to to do the best thing provide the best support they can my family was very supportive my friends were very supportive and all of that coming together helped me to calm down to accept what was going on, but but mainly to calm down and release the stress, the strain, and of course the shock of it all. Okay, so you set a plan up basically, which gave you a positive mindset because you think, well, this is a way to recovery here. Look, getting support and having develop a plan with that support certainly aids in progressing into the recovery stage of cancer. Absolutely. Look, all I can talk about is my own experience, okay. and that has been my experience. Okay, Jeff, another question here. Like, I know I've been through experiences, but people don't really understand it unless because they're not going through it. Now, surely, yeah, I've got a, a feeling that when you're being diagnosed with cancer, you're talking to your friends and maybe even your family, they may not totally understand what you're going through my experience is only the ones that are going through totally understand yeah. the fear totally understand the depression that's that starts to develop totally understand all those things that happen to your emotional well-being after being told you may only have several weeks of life left but who understands that except the person that is going through it? Yeah. So you, you've you got to also sort of deal with those people as well and accept a bit of allowance because they're not going through it. They're not going to fully understand what you're going through. Look, unfortunately, what, what you say is 100% correct. And what, what I found was the more they tried to understand, the more they tried to help me through this, um, the the less genuine it became, because nobody can, nobody feels that feeling of I'm, I've had it. I'm not going to be alive much longer. Nobody except the person that it's affecting. But you're quite correct. But having a plan, having support, the best support that you can under very difficult circumstances, certainly made a difference to me. Okay, Jeff. So you got a plan. You're now going through the process of recovery. What advice would you give someone going through that process? General advice. Accept, accept, accept. Reebok, the family that I was staying with began to give me a vegetable and fruit diet, something I had never, ever considered before. But I just laid there and I just started eating that all that stuff they were giving me, which was very foreign to me. I accepted that. I accepted their goodwill towards me. I accepted that I was in this position and whether if I was going to survive this, great. And if not, great. What can I do? And slowly as the days passed, I started to feel a bit better and I started to feel more positive. And then more days passed and I felt more positive and I started to feel even better. Okay. Do you want to yeah, so th this is a, a big move because now you're on a really healthy diet. But, you know, I know myself, when you go on a healthy diet, sometimes you get lows. 
So, and then you can go back onto a junk food diet, which is definitely not going to work in your situation. So how did you say motivated to stay during the lows on that good diet, et cetera, on that path, that good path that you're on? Look, once being told you're about to die, once being told there's no, nothing more that can be done for you, believe you me, a vegetable and fruit diet is nothing. It's, it's, it becomes quite nice. I might add, that in hospital I was unable to eat. The smell of food made me ill. Fruit and vegetables, they were uncooked or very, very slightly steamed. They have no smell. I was in heaven. I was eating again. Uh, it was actually a really good experience for me. Now, let, let me say this. Five and six years on, I am still on the same diet. When I began that diet, that is what I was doing. Now on this diet, it's become who I am. And there's a very, very big difference. And look, I don't want to say it again, but I'm going to. I'm nearly 70 years old. I've never felt better. I've never felt so much energy and so happy in my life, Reebok. What's the next question, mate? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's. I just want to get you on that one because it sounds like your attitude changed. So when you had a plan in action, the plan, and you started to recover, you started to feel better. So it sounds like it was easier to actually stick to your plan and stay motivated. Well, as the days go by, and then you know, I realised I wasn't dead yet. I had a lot to be thankful for, yeah, and yeah. then my energy, my energy started to come back. I was playing with the dogs. I was doing chores around the farm. I was, I was in a much, much better frame of mind. And the more time that passed, the more positive I became. The more positive I became, the easier it was, and the better I became. My health had came back within. I'd say within three months, I was working on this farm pretty well, six, seven, eight hours a day doing everything that I was asked or everything to, that I was asked to do or could help around the farm with. Yeah, okay. And, and, and let me just say, let me just add, yeah. that was digging holes. That was uh, uh, mowing lawns. It was chopping down trees. It was putting fences in. I mean, Reebok, this is something that a young fella of 25 year, years old should be doing. Yeah, Not somebody that, that's just got the past cancer. Absolutely. That's a massive turnaround. Working on the farm, that's not easy. That's a, the hardest work there is. So that's a magnificent turnaround there. Jeff, what was the most difficult part of this recovery process? There must have been some parts that were hard. Even though you're feeling better, there must have been some difficult parts. Look, I can tell you this. The most difficult part was being in hospital on the chemo machine, on the in the radiation machine, it was it was being surrounded by people that were ill all the time. Um, that that was the hardest part. And and look, I just want to reiterate that that therapy practically killed me. Now the rest was quite easy when, when I think about it. The rest was quite easy, but actually going through the hospital therapy now that was the hard bit. Okay, so what you're saying is you reach that low. But then if you accept it, you put a plan in place and you start to recover, you actually start to feel better. You're not going to feel that low. You're going to actually start, even though you've got cancer, you're going to, you're going to start to feel better. Absolutely. And and hope. I, I found hope was one of the biggest things that I needed. Now, look, I just want to get back to my full recovery. Um, I'm sure I mentioned it in the other video, but I'll just say this. Having visited the doctor after 18 months, he said to me, well, the, the conclusion was I am completely cured of cancer. I have no cancer in my body. I had two massive tumours, completely gone. I have fully recovered, Reebok, absolutely fully recovered. So there is hope. There is absolute hope for everyone. And it doesn't have to be cancer. It can be any illness. My experience is there is hope. If you start taking care of yourself, yourself will start taking care of you. Okay. So... Jeff, let's wrap this up, but I want to know your, your three key learnings. What were your three key learnings from this experience? Well, your body is truly a temple. And one learning I've had is don't trash your temple, which I used to do as a younger man. I used to completely trash it. Don't do that anymore. Have faith, have hope and have faith that that. Miracles do happen. Now, I'm not talking religious miracles. Please don't misunderstand that. But miracles do happen. 
That's number two. And number three, having arrived at a complete and total change of lifestyle, behavior, and who you are, I'll just repeat this. In the beginning, it's what I used to do, the healthy, the healthy part of it. Now it's who I am. It, it cannot be, I don't believe I can change it, even if I wanted to. I haven't had a drink. I haven't had a cigarette. And anyway, that's, I don't want to go into that. That's bullshit. You chop that bit out. But I'll just say it's, it, it is who I am these days. I'm, un, I believe I'm unable to return to the bad old days of when I was a young man, Reebok. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Great stuff. So massive turnaround there. And hopefully that's a bit of, motivation inspiration and a little bit of education for our viewers as well okay thanks jeff uh we'll catch you next time pleasure's mine reebok thanks for having me on okay